so let me talk now about the attempts to measure these three aspects of warped space time in the solar system. Let's begin with the warping of space. This thing is no longer a black hole, it's now the sun. And uh, in 1976, there was a landmark experiment in which uh, the Earth was over here, Mars was over there, the Viking spacecraft was in orbit around Mars, and radio signals were sent out from the Earth to the Viking spacecraft and, to, uh, trans, and uh, transponded back to the Earth. Those radio signals had encoded on them a digital code so that uh, one could measure the, uh, the round triple travel time for a piece of the radio signal to go out and come back. Uh, and uh, Einstein insists, uh, his theory insists that the speed of propagation of electromagnetic signals is an absolute constant. So by measuring the round trip travel time, one was actually measuring the distance between the Earth and the Viking spacecraft in orbit around Mars. Now in my next graphic, I show what the warping of space di uh, did to uh, that distance. Because space was warped uh, uh, in the vicinity of the sun, the distance traveled uh, was predicted to be uh, at w when the signal was coming the cl at its closest point to the edge of the sun. It was predicted to be 37 kilometers longer than you would have expected. That's 37 kilometers out of 378 million kilometers. So it's a small effect. But uh, the precision of the measurement was 37 meters. That is, to a part accuracy of a part in a thousand, it was verified that uh, the uh, w space is warped, as indicated in the diagram. And because the Earth and the Moon moved in their orbits, uh, it, uh, it was possible to monitor that mar warping as the uh, trajectory of the radio signals moved close to the sun and then away. So it was possible to actually map out the, the warping of space and verify that it was just uh, to this very high precision of a part in a thousand of what you would expect. So in the next graphic, uh, then, we'll talk about the measurement of the dragging of space into motion by the spin of the Earth. So this Earth spins uh, on its axis at one revolution uh, per day. And that angular momentum of the Earth, then, in the immediate vicinity of the Earth, uh, drags space into motion with an uh, angular velocity of one revolution in six million years. A tornado-like motion, but a very weak tornado. Uh, it obeys an inverse cube law. It, uh, the, that angular velocity is out as the inverse cube of distance from the Earth, uh, Earth's center. Uh, that motion, uh, if you come back on, on to the, bring the cameras back onto me, that motion takes hold of the gyroscope, uh, and the whirling motion of the uh, of space around the Earth grabs the gyroscope and causes the gyroscope to change its spin axis. It like a straw floating on the surface of a river where the river flows faster near the center and slower near the bank, the straw will turn, and it's precisely the same thing going on here. Space moves faster near the Earth and slower farther away, and the spin axis of the gyroscope turns. This graphic was uh, to, uh, to describe the past measurement of warping of time uh, in the solar system. This was Gravity Probe A. You may have wondered what Gravity Probe A was. We keep talking about Gravity Probe B. Gravity Probe A in 1976, a, a set of, uh, of atomic clocks were launched to a height of 10,000 kilometers above the Earth uh, in a rocket. An identical set of atomic clocks down at the Kennedy Space Center was ticking away and the ticking rates of the clocks in the rocket were telemetered back down to the surface of the Earth at, in order to compare the rate of flow of time at 10,000 kilometers height versus the rate of flow of time on the Earth. The prediction was that time should flow more slowly on the Earth by four parts in 10 billion. And the measurement verified that, and it verified it to uh, one part in 10,000, a beautifully accurate measurement of a tiny effect, but an effect which is enormously large around black holes. Um, so Lisa is a, 
uh, mission that will involve three drag-free spacecraft using the same kind of drag-free drag uh, techniques as uh, were uh, developed for Gravity Probe B, so it relies on Gravity Probe B technology in that sense and building on Gravity Probe B technology. These three spacecraft at the corners of a triangle, six million kilometer arms separating them, uh, and looking for waves of warped space and time. And so it's the three aspects of space-time warpage, warping of space, warping of time, and uh, dragging of space, but in a wave-like form propagating through the universe, uh, produced by different o distant objects. Lisa will see primarily the effects of the warping of space. It's a stretching and squeezing of space, causing these spacecraft to move back and forth relative to each other as these waves go by. One of the objects that we will uh, study with Lisa is a big black hole with smaller object, a smaller black hole or a white dwarf or a neutron star going around the big black hole. As the big black hole spins uh, on its axis and if the uh, smaller object is in an inclined orbit, as shown in the next, uh, in my graphic, uh, that drags the orbit uh, into a uh, turning motion. And so you see the little black hole going around the big black hole uh, in its circular orbit. Each time it goes around the big black hole, you get an oscillation in, uh, of a stretching and squeezing of space, of stretch and squeeze that's sh shown down at the bottom. So you see something going up and down in an oscillatory fashion. Each of those little wavelets going up and down, or each, uh, each up and down is is it comes from the small black hole going around the big black hole. But then the dragging of space into motion by the big black hole causes a precession of the orbit. The orbit turns as shown by the red arrow, and that causes a modulation of the waves. And so you see this modulation. And so we, will, with Lisa, will get very high precision measurements uh, through the modulation we'll see very high precision measurements of the dragging of space, dragging, the space dragging, dragging that orbit. So if you come back to me, uh, you, you'll see the orbit go around, plane go around and around through those modulations. But only by virtue of gravity probe B's having verified the relationship of spin angular momentum to the dragging of space and told us, a, a yes, general relativity is correct about uh, that proportionality constant, and it corrected it is the angular momentum that's doing this. And so we have a firm foundation for now interpreting these observations, with gravity probe B having done the calibration in that sense. We can, we'll, with LISA then, when LISA flies, we will be able then to uh, interpret the observations when we see the modulation of these waves, we'll be able to interpret those observations and say there was a black hole, it was spinning at a certain spin rate, which we can infer from the observations, and uh, we can infer it with complete confidence because gravity probe B has shown us the relationship between spin angular momentum on one hand and uh, the dragging of space on the other hand.